but you, nobody but you, nobody but you. Oh, glory, glory to your name. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Thank you, oh God. Woo! Thank you, oh God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. His name is worthy of praise. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Great godly Sunday morning, each and every one of you. You are joining worship with Pastor Thomas J. Thomas in City of Zion Church in Toledo, Ohio. And we came to praise the name of the Lord. We came to bless his name today. For indeed, he is worthy. He was worthy all week, and he's worthy on Sunday morning. Find your place of praise right where you are. Make your home a sanctuary. Make your living room a sanctuary. Make your heart a sanctuary. For God is worthy to be praised. We came to bless his name. worship experience to your page so your friends can join you in blessing the name of the Lord. For today is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We will delight ourselves in the Lord who will give us the desires of our heart. For every challenge that today brings, we will embrace the joy of the Lord as our strength and count it all joy. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and in every single thing, give for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for your life and for my life. This is your call to worship. Hallelujah. Let everything that have breath praise the name of the Lord. For he is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. In the fullness of his presence and in the fullness of his grace and in the fullness of his love for us. We're going to lift him up. We're going to say, Lord, you're mighty. We're going to call him wonderful counselor because he's worthy. Hallelujah. Lift up a worship to his name and give him praise. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all within me. Every day is joy, knowing you as Savior and more. I'm reminded as I reflect upon your goodness, your love and mercy endure forevermore. Sing, oh, 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 oh. bless his name, bless the name of Jesus, oh my soul.
wonderful counselor, mighty king, prince of peace, all those things God is. And we bless his name right now. I am reading Ephesians 4, 11 through 16 from the Passion Translation. So I want you to read with me. And he anointed some with grace to be apostles, and some with grace to be prophets, and some with grace to be evangelists, and some with grace to be pastors, and some with grace to be teachers. And their calling is nurtured and prepare all the holy believers to do their own works of ministry. And as they do this, they will enlarge and build up the body of Christ. These grace ministries will function until we all attain oneness into the faith, until we all experience the fullness of what it means to know the Son of God. And finally, we become one into a perfect man with the full dimensions of spiritual maturity and fully develop into the abundance of Christ. And then our immaturity will end, and we will not be easily shaken by trouble, nor led astray by novel teachings or by the false doctrines of de deceivers who teach cover lies. But instead, we will remain strong and always sincere in our love as we express the truth. All our direction and ministries will flow from Christ and lead us deeper into him, the anointed head of his body, the church. For his body has been formed in his image and is closely joined together and constantly connected as one. And every member has been given divine gifts to contribute to the growth of all. And as these gifts operate effectively through the whole body, we are built up and made perfect in love. Let us pray. Father, we are eager to be in your presence today. We honor and bless your name. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. All the things you have done for us, we are grateful for that you are continuing to cover us. Lord, fill us up with your spirit that what we do, how we minister, how we love will be a complete reflection of you. We open our hearts to you, Lord, asking you to cleanse us from distractions, from uneasiness, and from strongholds. Father, we humbly want to serve you. So keep us grounded in you. Keep our minds stable. Keep our hearts filled with compassion. Keep our lives filled with peace that you, your will shall be done. In the mighty name of Jesus, so it is. Amen. in the name of Jesus. The name of the Lord is a mighty strong tower. The righteous run in and they are safe. Hallelujah. The name of the Lord is the name that heals. The name that saves. The name that sets free. There is no other name by which we are saved. So we're going to love on the name of Jesus. We're going to magnify it. We're going to make it great in this place. We're going to make it great in our hearts. We're going to make it great in our lives. Because there is no greater name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
can heal, calms my storm, peace be still, I can go.
screen. It works. on the screen it works for me it works for me it works it works it works it works it worked 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 that name Good to me. Give God praise. Put your hands together all over the room. Come on, put your hands together on the screen. My, 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 my. song says that name heals all and I know I'm already I'm already I'm already going because we've been thanking God in advance for healing and let me just say this I'd ask you all to pray for the little baby Kaylee and uh, I got word that she's off the ventilator and 
She'd been in the hospital longer than she has been in the world, uh, and and yet she's making progress, and they're getting she's getting where she needs to go. And so this is why we gather. I'm gonna give you plenty of opportunities to give God praise. I gave y'all the definition of why we gather last week, so we're just gonna keep practicing the definition of why we gather. Let me give you my definition one more time. The church gathers to praise God, to celebrate his goodness. Now, if you got any reason to celebrate his goodness, that's, that's your opportunity to go ahead and, and praise God right there. If he's been good to you, if he's been good to you, come on, in, in, your, in your living room, wherever you are, go ahead, and, go ahead and praise God. That's why we gather. That's why we gather. Yeah, 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 yeah. God, you've been good. You've been good. You've been good. You, you've been real good to us. Hallelujah. We, we gather to celebrate his goodness. And, and it's, it's good to be home, isn't it? It's good to be back at 701. And we want to pause right now to thank Bishop Hall and the New Psalmist people for allowing us to occupy their space on a regular basis while our painting was being done and we want to thank you Bishop Paul and to all of you at New Psalmist for allowing us to share space with you and and so we praise God for you and we thank you and and yet don't don't y'all get comfortable because I got another reason why we gather I'm, I'm gonna make sure I'm, I'm clearer now than I've ever been uh, 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 as to what I'm supposed to be doing and that is to making sure that the church knows who she is. And I ain't talking about the address, but I'm talking about you. You lay your hand on yourself and, and tell yourself, I'm anointed for this. Mm, I'm anointed for this. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. We, we, we not only gather to praise God, to celebrate his goodness, but we, we also gather to praise God because of his faithfulness. And if God has been faithful to you, that's your cue right there. You ain't got to wait on nobody else to, to praise him. Because when I, when I think of how faithful he's been, he's been faithful when I wasn't faithful. Who am I talking to today on the second Sunday in August? Uh, uh, he's been faithful. Come on, don't play with it. He's been faithful. He's been faithful. He's been faithful. He's been faithful. Oh, yes, he has. But not only has he been good, but not only has he been faithful, but we gather to celebrate his love. And I don't know about you, I, I, I know the love of the Father now in a way I didn't know it just not too long ago. Y'all can act like y'all have always known the love of the Father like you know him. But if you know him now like you knew him then, maybe that wasn't the Father. Maybe. But, but, but if you know him like I know him, if you know that the love of the Father fails not, I dare you to give him praise. I dare you to just open up your mouth and uh, tell him, thank you, God, for loving me when I wasn't lovable. I, I didn't come to push you, but I came to encourage you and to remind you that the love of the Father. <laughs> yes, sir. been real good to us he's been faithful he's been good and his love is never failing and for that we give him praise thank you God thank you God thank you God mm. hallelujah hallelujah yes God yes God Yes, God. Yes, God. You've been good, God. You've been good. You've been good. You've been so good to us. You've been faithful. Faithful, God. 
You didn't, you didn't let us down when we let you down. And so we just gather, we gather right now in every, every space that we're in just to, just, to, just to praise you, God. Just to praise you, just to praise you. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. He's my rock. He's my Yes, you are. He's my fortress. He's my deliverer. In him will I trust. Praise the name of Jesus. Boy, y'all sound mighty good today. Yes, Lord. Love. One more time. Come on. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name. Praise the name of Jesus. gather to praise him and that's why we're here today to just love on him because he is worthy of all the praise and when you start thinking about how God has kept you all these months and as we're dealing with this new variant we still praise the name of Jesus don't get weary in well-doing, beloved. But we can't miss the lesson in Corona. I, I've learned to thank God for Corona. I've learned to thank God for COVID-19, not the virus, but for what it's teaching me, what it's allowing me to experience with God, in God, in faith. Don't, don't, don't lose me. Don't, don't waste this time. And I know you, you, you want to be post-pandemic. But let me, let me tell you, don't even put that word in your vocabulary. We, we're not post now, and we ain't going to be post for a while. Because you got to understand, this, this virus is determined more so than we are not to die. It's looking for more hosts. It's looking for something else to mutate on. And if you're not careful beloved if you just are thinking about going back you're going to miss the meaning of COVID-19 altogether if you're not any closer to God after all this time then what have you been doing how is your prayer life no 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 I'm not talking about prayer meeting but how is your prayer life don't let a crisis make you have to pray but I've learned to pray in and out of season at any time and any reason. And it, prayer works 
better when you just pray to God just out of gratitude, when you're just thankful that God is good, that God is great, and he is merciful. I, I know y'all want me to go on, but let me tell you, I ain't going to move on from here until you understand that's the real reason that we gather. We don't gather just to go through the time. We want the time to go through us because somebody has been struggling all week long trying to figure it out and tuned in, and they're tuning in to hear the praises of God's people, and that's really what gathering in worship, whether it be with 12 or whether it be anywhere, that's what gathering to pray that's why we assemble type on the screen that's the reason why we assemble because when I assemble I get to see the miracles and the wonders that God uh, has performed when I look at Byron when I look at Nate I see miracles because uh, all week long there were things that could have taken them out that could have wiped them out there were car accidents that they did not have y'all ain't talking let me talk to this side over here there were things Things that could have overwhelmed them but when I look at them I'm not just looking at them because I saw them last week I'm thanking God for the miracle and the wonder that he has allowed them to be but don't you worry about it just look in the mirror and thank God for the miracle that you are don't you get jealous that I didn't call your name you are a miracle you are a wonder and that's why we gather to assemble to praise his name Oh, y'all, I'm telling you, I, I, I've been delivered from a program. I've been delivered from just an order of worship. Because what I've learned in this uh, uh, season is that it's not my order or what we nice word make nice. It's a guide to worship, and still we control that. I'm glad that I don't have to be in control when I enter into the place and the presence of God. I can just allow him to have his way, and it ain't because I got to allow him. God will have his way whenever he gets ready. I wish I had company here. I, I know I don't have a 75 minute but somebody needs to praise God for the fact that God is faithful. Type it on the screen. God is faithful. God is good. And God is love. I know. I know. I know. I know. We, we're serving the Lord's Supper every day in the month of August, and I know we're going to serve it today. So I know you. I want to give you a chance to get your elements together. We're not going to do it now, but I need you to get it together because there's power. They sang the song uh, about that there's power in the name of Jesus. Everything you need is found in Jesus. And so that's why we are doing some different things. We are praying every Monday night at the campus at 6 p.m. outside because we know that if it can't be done with prayer, it can't be done. And so I'm, I'm, I'm in a different place and I'm, I'm all right with that and the scripture has already been read. We're going to make the declaration over our Bible in a minute while you're getting your, your Bible. Let me read a few things that I have here. And uh, would y'all clap your hands for the, the, the minstrels, the music team, would you? Praise God for them, Xavier and Nate and Byron today and our tech man, amen. Uh, we can't see him. He running around here with an iPad trying to control us and things. But uh, nevertheless, Elder Cameron, we're thankful for you. And didn't they sing? Did they not bless us? They, 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 they kind of, you know, they, they, they're kind of reserved because they don't want to pat themselves on the back. But I'm going to brag on them in front of them. Boy, they sang me happy today. They sang me happy today. One thing I love about this music group is that they don't entertain, but they serve God in ministry. And this, this I ain't throwing no shade. I just like them. And uh, my, my friend, we, we got her on loan today. I'm so glad she was with us today. Amen, amen. And, and uh, yeah, come on, clap your hands for all our singers today. We're just one big family here in Toledo. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let me read. I, I'm, I'm going on now. Get your Bible ready. But this says, uh, Mount Zion, the city of Zion Church, thank you for blessing me with the book scholarship. 
I really appreciated love Aaliyah Johnson. Come on, let's celebrate uh, that. And um, uh, we're grateful for her. And uh, it says, uh, this says, Dear church family, thank you so kindly for all of your blessings. I'm very grateful to have been surrounded by all your love and care through the years. I truly appreciate all your support and guidance and uh, pray continued blessings on you and all your families with great love, Nia Thomas. Lord, I didn't write it. I promise you I didn't. She wrote it all by herself. And so uh, she got a few more days at my house and then she got to get out. Amen. But I don't know what I'm going to do when she go. But anyway, she got to go. But uh, we thank you for all of the gifts and kindness you've shown toward her. And um, prayers for her are uh, necessary as well as all of our students as they get ready to go back to school. I'm preaching already. Don't worry. But it's important that we, the people of God, the family of faith, the power that we have. Do y'all know y'all have power? Okay, only two people in this room said they, they, they know it, but, but, but I need you to get this, and I'm, I'm going to give it to you, and I'm going to teach it to you a little bit later, but you, you have power that uh, God has given you, and I want to just, just, just make note of it. You, you, you've got power as human beings. Oh, yes, you got power. Genesis 1, verse 26 and 27 that that right that that's the first kind of power you have and then the second kind of power you have is you have power as servants of God Luke 10 18 through 20 and and then there are those that have triple power and that is you have the power of Pentecost y'all know that's acts don't you acts 1 and 8 and you shall receive power now don't 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 let a denomination snatch that. That's in the Bible. Y'all y'all know that's in the Bible, and so uh, th those those belong to you. And don't you let anybody rob you of what belongs to you. That's why you don't pray. We don't pray, Lord, uh, if it is your will. That, that that used to sound humble in the old church. I remember now. I grew up in church, so I can say it. I know they would say those prayers because they didn't want to be arrogant. That was the best they knew at the time. Y'all remember, you had some grandparents that said, Lord, if it is your will, because they didn't want to encroach on what God wanted. And I, I hear some of you say, well, whatever God wants. Listen, he's given you a power. He's given you an ability to agree with what he wants and he allow you to have some of the stuff you want. And that's why as a child of God in his will, you don't have any business asking for nothing outside his will anyway. So so take that part out, all right? If it is your will. No, no, no. Lord, thank you for your will being done in my life. That, that, that's, listen, the Bible says we can approach the throne of God boldly now. This is not naming or claiming for those of you that are trying to, you know, uh, mess with me. Don't, I'm not, I'm claiming what God said I can have. I have power as a human, power as a servant, Wilma, and the power of Pentecost. So why am I going to walk around here acting as if God? I need God to do some things uh, that he's already given me the authority and the ability to do? I don't need God to pay my bills. God gave me the ability to do that. I need him to help me prioritize my money so I don't waste the money he gave me to pay my bills. Y'all ain't talking. Come on, lift your Bible up. This is my Bible. <laughs> This is my Bible. I can do what it says. I can do. It is the life-changing, time-altering word of the living God. Listen, I got about a good 13 minutes, so uh, understand that I'm not ever rushing again uh, because I'm the pastor. I can pick it up next week, and uh, so I'm not rushing. But I, I started... Uh, uh, preaching last Sunday on uh, the post-ascension church. Y'all remember that? Uh, well, I just want you to know all month that's what I'm preaching, all right? So today is going to be part two, and uh, next week you know what part that'll be. 
Uh, I, I, I ask y'all if you wanted, I, I wanted every one of you to have this because there are a lot of uh, scriptures that I want you to grasp and to become comfortable with. I gave you a definition, and uh, for those of you that uh, signed up for our Reconnect Conversations, I, I forgive you for not showing up uh, last week on Tuesday and Wednesday, but I'm expect you to make up uh, during the Reconnect Conversations this Tuesday and Wednesday uh, because my time is valuable and uh, I, I value your time and I need you to value mine. Uh, amen. Thank you so very much, Pastor. Uh, we, we forgot. Please forgive us. And you don't tell on yourself. Just show up on Tuesday or Wednesday when your turn or what have you comes. And you, you registered for it. I had 18 registered and then I had one show up. So uh, I guess 17 of y'all forgot y'all registered. But uh, don't worry. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm saying this in love. It's in love. It's in love. Uh, but I'm going to need y'all to honor the time. All right. Thank you so very much for being kind to me. I'm going to be kind to you. Because I value your time. I'm going to need you to value my time, all right? Thank you so much. Y'all are so wonderful. I, I appreciate y'all. I do. I do. I do. And, and so um, this is post-ascension. See, y'all just moved right on. Y'all went into another room. There you go. Uh, post-ascension church part two. The foundational scripture has already been read. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 through 16 in the Passion Translation. And then we used Acts chapter 2, verses 42 through 47 in the Passion Translation. And the part that I want to focus on um, today is that um, we were, we left off uh, talking about the definition of, of the post-ascension church. And let me give it to you again. It'll be pinned on the screen. Um, the post-ascension church is an aggregate of believers, a congregation of the righteous that assembles, watch this, to praise God, to celebrate his goodness, faithfulness, and love. It gathers, it assembles to arm, equip, and prepare. It gathers to celebrate the victories, miracles, and blessings from God. And at any time when you think about the victory that God gave you, you, you don't have to wait on the music. You don't have to wait on anybody to praise him. But, but when you just think yourself happy, just go ahead and take happy, all right? Uh, when you think about the blessings from God, but then the definition continues, the church then deploys to reflect and represent God, to continue to celebrate our victories and blessings from God in every space it is in. I ask God to give me recall of what our conversation was like earlier this week, and here he's given it to me. Thank you, God, for recall. He said, you got to be very careful of these private disciples. He's, you got to be careful of these real private people that don't want anybody to know what's really going on because then when God does something, they really can't celebrate with nobody because they didn't tell anybody. Stay with me. Because there were private disciples in the Bible. Joseph of Arimathea was a private disciple, and all Joseph of Arimathea could offer Jesus was a grave. And private disciples scare me because you won't own me in public, but you'll worry me to death on Instagram and Twitter. You, you'll wear me out. Pastor, can you do this? Pastor, you, private disciples. Y'all ain't got to say nothing. And you got to be real careful of private disciples. Why? Because understand that one of the reasons that the church is deployed, the reason you go where you go is that you, you're not going to show up in all your pulchritude and your beauty and all of that, but you go where you go and when they see you, they ought to see the victory that God has given you week by week and day by day. I'm really preaching, y'all, that the, the joy 
the, the blessings of God. When I look at you, I see the blessings of God all over you. And that's the same dress you had last year. It ain't in the dress, baby. It ain't in the shoes, brother. It ain't in all of that. But just the fact that you're walking, talking, and breathing on your own is a blessing from God. That's why you got to deploy, and some of y'all are so concerned about when we're going back. Listen, let me tell you, with, uh, I might as well go on and drop this on you in the middle of the sermon. Y'all know me that uh, with all of this going up, it probably won't be better in a month by the 12th. So you all already know, here it is, uh, we're going to push that date right on back until it gets better. And uh, uh, I just need you all to know, don't worry about the block party because we'll reschedule that too, all right? And so understand that we're not going to gather to uh, uh, bring people together while this is rising the way that it is, all right? I just made that announcement so y'all have it. So, but, but we gather and when we see one another in Kroger or whatever, mask and all, you ought to, when you see a child of God Netta in the grocery store you ought to just pull up your praise right there in the aisle number seven or wherever it is because the fact that they are in the grocery store that means they got some money to shop and y'all know that money can be funny and change can be strange but the fact that God has blessed you with a little bit and more than enough because some of y'all know y'all in the dessert section of life and you know that God not only gives you the entree and the vegetables there it is, but he gives you a little bit of dessert. Where are the people that know that God is blessing me? Ah, that's why we got to maintain uh, our deployment because when the church is deployed, it reflects and represents God. And we've got to make sure, beloved, that we continue to represent and reflect God and the blessings of God in every space that we're in. Well, let me give you uh, uh, what I have for you today in this part too, because we talked last time about reframing the way we see the church of Jesus the Christ so that we are functioning, let the church say functioning, properly as the postmodern, post-ascension church. I had a meeting this past week with um, Police Chief Crawl, and we, we had coffee, and he had coffee. I had water with lemon in it. It was hot, and um, yet we met together, and he, he was saying to me how he had not seen things the way that they are now. And I'm, 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 I'm hearing him. He is the police chief. I'm the preacher, but God navigated our circumstances so that I could give him what I needed to give him because what I know is uh, they are called to protect and serve, but their protecting and serving comes uh, with limitations. But I know a God who is able to do exceedingly abundantly more than we can ask or think. So I waited till my chief got done. He's my favorite chief. And then I said, well, chief, I need you to understand I'm praying for you. I'm praying for all of the officers of TPD because I know y'all have a tough job because y'all show up and then people cuss y'all out that y'all are trying to help take care of and all that. I said, welcome to my world. My world is pretty much like yours. I get cussed out a whole lot of times. They just don't tell me. I'm trying to bless people, help people, pull people, uh, uh, pray for people, lift people, enjoy, encourage people, and then when they get tired of me, they find another preacher. I understand. So, chief, don't get weird in your well-doing. I dropped the scripture on him, y'all. Don't get weary in your well-doing. If you faint not, you shall reap a just reward. And I gave him Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. I said, but if you just seek him first, everything, everything. Chief, at some point, you get to the end of your rope, and there's so much you can do. But I got a God who is able to do exceedingly abundant. I'm preaching the Bible, y'all. Exceedingly abundantly more than you could ever ask or think. So go on, Chief, with your bu bulletproof vest on. Go on back out there and do your thing. Send your people on out there. But know that when you've done the best that you can do, when you have given 
the best of your service, God is able to see what you can't see. And when God sees you've done all that you can do, is there anybody on the other side of the camera, even in the room, that lets me know that when you reach the end of your rope, God will reach for you. There is somebody that knows that it works. It works, it works, it works. I gave you three questions. I'm not going to go into all of them, but the number one was, what is it? Number two was, what is it going to cost me? What are the costs related to this? And number three, what's in it for me? And we started talking about the church. Let the church say, the church. And the question that we raised was, uh, when did you leave yourself if you are talking about when are we going back to church? Because the church can't leave itself if you are the church, and then where you going to go? What you going to go back to? And we talked about how Matthew 16, 13 through 19 in the Passion Translation, it, it talks about how, you, you know that story, it's where Jesus asked the question, what are people saying about me? And we raised the, the question, and then that, that some say, and then they said that, well, others say, he said, listen, I ain't tripping on what they say, I ain't tripping on what I feel like preaching, what some say, but I want to know what you say and come here, this is what I got to drop on you and then we're going to get on out of here. What, what are you saying about Christ with your attitude that stinks at work? What are you saying when can't nobody tell you nothing? You can't listen to nobody but who you want to listen to. What are you saying about Christ? Because what he's really saying to them, he's saying to them is, he says, how do you see me? That's what he said. He, he, he said, some are convinced you're John the baptizer. Others are, say you're Elijah reincarnated or Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said, but, but you, verse 15, he says, but, but, but who, preach TJ, who do you say that I am? And really, the Thomas interpretation of that is, uh, what, what, how do you see me? Come here. Because how you see me is how you show me to other people. showing him to be but then Peter in spite of himself was privileged to have the ability to receive revelation and that's why when we pray instead of asking God for more stuff we ought to ask God for the ability to hear revelation we ought to ask God to, the ability to see what God wants us to see because when God Felicia allows you to hear what everybody else can hear it can cause you to not have accidents when everybody else is in a 10 car pile up how many y'all know that there's sometimes when you get an advance notice y'all call it GPS or way the Waze app and some of you when you're riding in the Waze app if you are on the highway it'll tell you in advance there is a back up on this way so you might want to take an alternative route how many y'all know Waze has the Holy Ghost Waze has the Holy Ghost because uh, that's just what the Holy Ghost will do it will guide you away from preach TJ I'm trying to do the best that I can it will guide you around traffic jams uh, and in this life life on the ground, Monique. We run into traffic jams with people and they seem to always get caught up in the thick of stuff and that's why you need revelation to deal with your situation because we don't walk by situation no more. We walk by revelation because when you walk by revelation Netta, you ain't got the trip over who got a new bag. You ain't got the trip over who shows you on Instagram where they are. You can know that God has better and God has some things in store for you if you will just trust him. I got to move on because I don't want to keep you all day. But, but, but what do you see? How do you see me really is the main question he's asking them because he says when, when you look at uh, what, what he says to Peter, he says, flesh and blood did not reveal that to you, but it was by my father. And I moved uh, uh, further after that, and I told you about the preeminence of Jesus. Let the church say preeminence. 
Jesus is the corner stone of the church. He's the head of the church, and we are the body. And that's what I believe, beloved, God is still saying with this variant. He's saying, ah, I gave y'all a chance to uh, get closer to me. I, I, I was doing something in COVID, and, and it seems like y'all are missing it. Y'all are missing me in it trying to get back to what you were in control of and I've been trying to get you out of control because you have made a mess being in control with your packaging and programming and presenting the church I'm sick and tired of your little nice things that you package and program and push it out there as sanctioned by me no that's really you and your ego that you've been feeding and here I want to drop this on the church who are we really marketing anyway are we really marketing the Lord or are we marketing the pastor are we marketing our church my church is doing it I'm so sick of people telling me about your church what about Jesus church your mask only half, and, 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 I, and, and don't, don't get me wrong, I, we got a nice mask with our little logo on, I got that, but, but, but ladies and gentlemen, uh, at least get you one that will market the Lord, what he's done for you, or who he is, get, get you another mask that says God is good all the time, y'all say it all the time, and I, God is good all the time, and all the time, get you a mask with that on, market something other than yourself, because if all we see is you on display then we might not be getting the real picture that we ought to get that's why it's important that we understand that in Ephesians chapter 1 verses 22 and 23 and I'm going to stop uh, with this and we'll pick up post ascension church part 3 next time he says and he alone hmm he, talking about his preeminence. Because until we put Jesus back where Jesus is supposed to be, we're going to keep missing it. This, 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 ain't about, this is not about us. This is about him. And you wonder why you keep going around the same bush, the same thing, over and over, year after year, month after month, is because you are on the center stage of your life and God has been trying to get you off all the time. I, I think it's the Apollo when they bomb, uh, help me, and they, they have this yank, they, they yank them off stage. Is that the Apollo? Because they really messing up. They like, mm, whew. And they yank them off. You know, God been trying to yank some of us off the stage because that's all that we think about is us. And God is saying, if you move out the way, I can really show you what your life really could be. But you are in the center of everything. I'm talking right this about Ephesians 1. He says, and he alone is the leader and source of everything needed in the church. Y'all miss your shout cue. I ain't got but about eight minutes left and the broadcast gonna be over. But is there anybody in the room or on the other side of the camera that can say, God yank me off the stage because I've made a mess of my life. And so while you yanking me off, take preeminence and take center stage because everything I need is in Jesus. I, 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 Y'all didn't believe me. I'm done. Y'all didn't believe me when I said you have power because some, some of y'all have been tricked into thinking that, you know, that that's a denominational thing. Only the Pentecostals, the full gospel, and all them people talk about power and authority. Listen, it's a Bible thing. Would y'all, I, I gave you scriptures. I gave you Genesis 1, 26 and 27. I gave you Luke uh, 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 10, 18. I gave you uh, 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 Acts 1 and 8. So, so here it is. Maybe you get it from this because it says God has put everything. Let the church say everything beneath the authority of Jesus Christ and has given him, preach TJ, and has given him the highest rank above all others. Look at verse 23, and I got to drop the mic and quit. It says, and now we, y'all don't know when to read the Bible. It says, and now we, his church, are his body. If he is the head and we are the body, the Bible 
Bible said he put everything beneath the authority of Jesus Christ. And that's why you are weak and wimpy and whiny because you don't know who you are. He has given you power and authority. It's under my feet. Y'all ain't know. Y'all don't know when to shout. But I'm not making nothing up. I'm in the Bible. It says, and has given him the highest rank above all others. And now we, his church, are his body on the earth. And that which fills him who is being filled by it. I got to just stop there. But understand, you have to know the power and the authority that God has given us as his body. Lay your hand on yourself. And just know that you have power, not in your summa, not in your, your psyche, but by being the body of Christ. You don't have to ever meander and wander around in the wilderness. Who am I talking to today? You got power. And I want to invite you not just, I'm shifting this as well. We, we're not any longer just going to invite you to join City of Zion. That that's not enough. That's, that's not good enough. Because the invitation for most of you, you've, you've, you've accepted him. You've already been saved a long time, but there's still an invitation for you. He's not inviting you to join another building. He's inviting you into relationship. Type it on the screen, sonship. And it's not male, female sensitive. God doesn't talk like that. He says, I've given you power to become the sons of God. And beloved, when we extend the invitation, it's not to join our little church and highlight our little ministries and all that. It's really about the relationship we're inviting you into with God. And I don't know who I'm talking to today, but that's the invitation to become a son. To become a, to, to really understand the relationship that goes with being his church. And I don't know about you, but I'm glad to be a son. Are you a son? If you're not a son, there's a, there's a form on the screen for you to fill out. And we want you to become a part of the family. I'm not talking about joining the church, but I'm talking about becoming a part of the family and becoming a son of God. Amen. Come on, clap your hands all over the room. <laughs> Hallelujah. And 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 I, I I told you giving giving is worship. You know that. We've been we we've been teaching and preaching about giving. I don't have to beg y'all anymore. Y'all know that when God loans and gives unto you, it's just right and proper to give to Him. Amen. I've learned in this, 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 this virus that, listen, God has all the money, and he gives some of it to us to entrust us with it. So now you don't have to wait till the end of church. When you get online, when you come in, you know you can give at any time. I'm going to trust God that you're doing that right now. We're not going to beg you. We're not going to trick you with no scriptures. I get so tired of that. You know, I'm really kind of glad we don't go to church in, in public, you know, with this because I got tired of preachers just lying, trying to trick me into, you know, giving me, they pull out these, all these scriptures and, and if you just, nah, look, I'm going to give what I purpose in my heart. Am I right? Am I, am I by myself? I feel y'all. That's why whenever they get up there and they start doing that, you know what? My mind goes left because I have already purposed what I'm going to give. I know I'm a tither, so I'm going to give. But I'm also a grace giver, so I'm going to give. You'll get more. Can I talk to my preacher friend? You'll get so much more if you just ask them to follow their heart that God had, what God has said give. That, that's all I'm going to say. Trust God. Follow, the, follow your heart when it comes to giving. Like you follow your heart at the mall. You, you know you follow your heart at the mall, right? 
Okay, because if you go looking for something and you find it, you're going you're gonna to follow your heart because they're going to put a certain amount out there and you're just going to pull out what it is. And, and that, So just follow your heart when it comes to God. Amen? Amen. So as we get ready to close today, we're taking the Lord's Supper every day in the month of August because we are honoring the supper. We're taking the supper out of the framework of the ritual. And so we don't do it ritually, but we do it reverence with reverence. And so I've told you, if you're at home, I gave you six of these. If you're out of them already, you're supposed to go to the grocery store, get your wine, get your juice, get your bread or your cracker like I did, consecrate it. Whatever you consecrate becomes consecrated. So we're getting ready to take the supper of the Lord. So, you know, the Bible is clear. It says uh, in Matthew 26, 26 through 29, and as they ate, Jesus took the bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples. Y'all have it. Take it now and let's eat together. He said, this is my body. Eat it. We've done that. Then he took the cup of wine. That's the Passion Translation, in case y'all thought I was making it up. It says, and he took the cup of wine, gave thanks to the Father, to the Father. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks. For he has given Jesus Christ, his son. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done. For us, give thanks. That's, that's what he did. He gave thanks to the Father. He entered into covenant with them, saying, This is my blood. Each of you must drink it in fulfillment of the covenant. For this is the blood that seals the new covenant. It will be poured out for many for the complete forgiveness of sins. Let's drink together. And now... Let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for us. And now, and now, let the weak say, Shall we pray? Father God, we're grateful this day that of all the things you do, you show yourself mighty and strong on our behalf. Even when we don't think that you're moving, you indeed are doing that and more. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God who reigns on the throne. Father, as you continue to perfect the spirit of unity in us here at the city, remind us that we represent you and to treat those you have loaned unto us with the same grace we expect to receive. As your gift of discernment is manifesting itself within us, teach us to trust it more than we rely on our own way. Give us hearts that are pliable in order that your will be done in the earth realm with us, your people. As we move further into this month of new beginnings, Father, help us to hasten towards your throne to receive grace. And God, we call upon you to have mercy on us also. Cover us with your protection and heal every dis-ease within our bodies as well as our minds. We will bless you now and forevermore. In the most matchless name of Jesus Christ, we pray, believing it is so. Amen.
May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to smile and shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift the light of his countenance upon you and grant you his peace. May he bless you in your labor and in your leisure, in your laughter and in your tears, until that day when we shall meet at the feet of Jesus, where there will be no sunrise nor sunset. Be blessed. <laughs>